Hey everybody, this is Rick with Scottsdale Urban Farms, Scottsdale, Arizona, 85254. And I uh, just wanted to introduce to you Phase 2. Uh, I haven't been out here much uh, taping, uh, recording anything, because we've just been so, so hard at work um, trying to get in before the heat hit. And we're, we're really made good progress. Uh, we're happy where... Uh, things have ended up at and we are in the process of Really really going to town and we're scaling everything out. So Here's what's going on A little fire pit So as you can see we've been watering uh, With a hose because I don't have irrigation back here yet. We're still designing things. We're still establishing how things look, what it's going to do, how, how it's just going to function. And um, Stephen Covey wrote a book, Seven Habits of Highly Successful Effective People. And one of the things that he talked about was beginning with the end in mind. And that's what we have to do. We're forced to do that. It's just a way of thinking strategically for the future. I'm thinking long term. I'm thinking, what will this look like uh, 20 years down the road? And this will be an orchard. These trees will be, uh, you know, I think I'm going to keep them to 10 feet high. And I don't want them any, really any taller than that because I, I want to be able to uh, reach the food. I, if you follow me before, you know, and right smack down in the middle of this orchard, in this segment of the orchard, there's a worm grocery store buried there. And there's a worm grocery store buried over there. We've got a fruit tree here, We've got one here, we've got one here. This is the south side that they're protected. These, all these trees out here, these are plums. And uh, that's a Santa Rosa plum, as you can see down there. And these are all grafts. So first year, we won't see any fruit on these for three years. We're okay with that. It's an investment of the future. This was a, uh, we just put this little cage up today, and it's pretty sturdy. I got to zip tie it here, but I uh, created a little pocket right here, and then nailed uh, this big old uh, tomato stake down in there. Got one on the other side, because we do get some winds, and monsoon's coming up, and then I buried it uh, down in there. It's down uh, in the uh, soil about three, four inches, so... That'll hold up pretty nice. But this is part of our butterfly garden. And the intention is to walk in from... Well, really, let me, let, me, let me kind of start over. We're, we're, we're building a new fence. And we're going to be going over to where that, like that, that log pile is. From that corner over, uh, right over to here. And we're going to add an additional part of the orchard here so it's going to start about right here and it's going to be fenced in keep the critters out this is uh this is what i've been making cages with tree cages for the uh for everything this one didn't make it it's under warranty we'll get another one this spring this here is a fruiting mulberry this is going to give us so much fruit. It's going to be so fun to make jams. Uh, and just almost everything on this plant is edible. And I would really, really encourage you guys to uh, do your research. If you live in the Arizona area, you can grow superfoods, super fruits. And this is, uh, this is a tree that produces that. We have, um, I think, five of those. Not this big. I'll show you another one over here uh, on the other side of the orchard. And then this is, uh, this is peach. So that's why we have, we have these on here. We've got these great clips Leanne bought. Holds these down just like a skirt or a bobby pin, you know, up here. And uh, the south side is, well, there's the west. You can see the sun. But the south side, the hottest part of the sun is right like this, where these, where these get beaten. And like I said, these trees want partial shade. And until we get our, our, our covers on, 
we're not going to be able to do that. So we're just we're just improvising with uh, with these, and we we feel that uh, it's really effective. As you can see, they're thriving. They're <laughs> they're really doing well. So and the cages are are staked down with pins, and um, we got those pinned down so they they don't go anywhere. And uh, we're really happy with uh, how everything is going, with the exception of this tree that died. We'll get another one in the spring. And so this is really, you know, this is this is phase two. This is this is where um, we don't have anything. It was just hard, hard, hard dirt, and, and like this, it's just super hard and it's just it's it's just dead dirt but here's the good news over here on the other side of the wall you can see the pool equipment over there um, right over there yeah right there that's that's an old drain to drain water and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow that line because we're gonna come over on the other side of this pool shed we have water plumbed and we're going to run some PVC and we're going to bring that up through the eaves. We're going to drop it down. I'm going to trench from here down to here, through here. And then we're going to bring it out uh, in the orchard here. And uh, we're going to have a, a box. We're going to build a post. We're going to have uh, outdoor water spigot. And then I have to figure out how we're going to irrigate all this because we have really three areas of the farm back here <clears throat> over by the fence line uh, where you see the green tarp over there what we're going to do where all those chips are over there in that back corner see about 16 feet from that uh, that uh, that corner there uh, going this way and then we're going to be about uh, 90 feet 96 feet I believe that is from there to there so 96 say by uh, 15 16 feet roughly uh, is going to be chickens and milker goats we're researching the goats we're not really want we just want to make sure that we're going to use the product ourselves. and if it's something that we can sell locally to those uh, consumers that want goat milk uh, I've drank uh, fresh goat milk there is nothing better it is really really good our goats would eat the best, uh, live in a stress-free and free environment, and uh, we'd, we'd, we'd really have some good, good quality milk. There's, there's no doubt about it. But I have to irrigate all this, so I've got a guy. I'm going to get the the initial box uh, out, and I'm going to get the post dug because uh, I need to irrigate all of this here, all of this. We're just making soil is all we're doing right now. We got chips out here and we water this and all we're doing is just making soil. That's it. And we've got monsoon season coming up. So what you see here is that project that will end up and transition over to here. And uh, we're going to have a walkway path as you come down splitting the orchard from the um, production side and then we're going to have a path right in the center and then we'll have another path going down that way so comment let me know real quick if you could if you have a greenhouse and you're in a climate like Arizona <clears throat> Texas New Mexico what uh, what are your thoughts about greenhouses? And um, I'm I'm open to it. I really am. If there's if there's an advantage or a good reason to uh, better purpose um, our growing, our seeding, uh, that would be great. Otherwise, I will do it. I'll uh, I'll do it like I've been doing it, and really really improve it. Uh, we'll do it a lot like you know phase phase one. And in phase one, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> strawberry patch. We're going to have a strawberry patch going straight out from there. 
and then another strawberry patch here. I'm making a, uh, a cage like that for this mulberry tree. Oh, another mulberry tree. Squirrel. So this is a mulberry tree. That over there is a mulberry tree. And then we've got one right there. So we're gonna let these, I'll let that one get really big because my neighbor can have all the fruit he needs. Uh, but back to, uh, back to the show. So we're gonna have a strawberry patch here, a strawberry patch there, a strawberry patch here. And we have a 1020 that's gonna come from this post here. We're gonna go over here to this stake, 10 feet. So this now will provide shade for this uh, tree here. And then we're gonna run, you can see the blue stakes here, gonna run this down to roughly two feet, oh, right there. Run that one down to here so we'll have a structure that looks like the current tomato patch, something like this. And then the current tomato patch is gonna get an absolute complete overhaul. Uh, the whole thing is going to uh, be caged in, just like you see here. And uh, that way we can have climbers we're also looking to put kettle panel trellis uh, up and over the top so that we can utilize this space here. I just love this amaranth. It is so awesome. Uh, and, and again, these are all volunteer. These, these two amaranth and that lettuce down there are discarded trays from our microgreens business that we have we take the soil out and just for some of you that don't know you haven't followed me here's a discarded microgreen tray okay so it's it's just it's cocoa coir that's it and then you've got the uh you can give it a little cross section here you can see the dirt cocoa coir it's not dirt it's a medium you can see on the bottom there there's the uh the the, the medium and you've got the discarded crop. This crop here was peas. So it wouldn't surprise me next year or even this fall uh, that we start seeing uh, peas coming up. Here's a perfect example, discarded tray, all right? So these are sunflowers and these will just, we'll just let them grow. So again, inside uh, this here, this is amaranth. And look at that. It's just beautiful. Discarded trays. So you, you, you can have a lot of fun. Right here's an example. Cilantro. Discarded microgreen tray. So we, we use everything. Absolutely everything. Uh, nothing goes to waste here on the farm. We repurpose it. There's some tomatoes. I just finished cleaning up uh, the last of our tomato plants and that's the last uh, tomato I got to bring inside we'll uh, make hash browns out of those breakfast for dinner but that's just kind of the update oh real quick um, gonna make another worm grocery store and what we're gonna do we've got the discarded uh, tomatoes uh, we've got discarded potatoes we've got discarded corn stalks and then the old um, the old, um, oh gosh, I'm forgetting, I'm drawing a blank. Forget it, it's, it's a good, it's, it's cool. Uh, oh, co oh, coriander. Uh, it's this, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's gone to seed. So that's going to, one's going to get buried underneath there. Uh, another worm grocery store going to get buried underneath there. And then the third grocery store uh, is going to get buried underneath here. We've got steer manure, we've got great soil amendments. And we're going to do raised beds and we're going to fence this off as well so hey sorry about the long video today uh, but just let me know how you guys are doing what kind of videos you'd like to see and uh let's let's research this together let's let's figure this out together i'm brand new at this and i'll share with you my story coming up here soon uh, as to how we got started what this is and uh, we're going to get a little uh, a little more in depth but we're going to really try to uh, find a nice easy balance between simplicity and complexity. We're going to look for that simplicity within 
complexity. And uh, a farm is a really great example of, a, uh, uh, of the science of complexity and specifically a complex adaptive system. Look that one up, Google that. And essentially to, to really make that uh, super simple, complex adaptive system simply means everything is connected to everything. Take care, everybody. Have yourself a great day. This is Rick Borden with Scottsdale Urban Farms in Scottsdale, Arizona, 85254.